there is nothing wrong with your internet, do not attempt to adjust your settings. We are controlling the podcast. We control the squealing and the screams. We can make your heart flutter, your eyes blur from tears, or sharpen your mind to crystal clarity. For the next hour, sit back. We are in control of what you hear. We repeat, there is nothing wrong with your setting. You are about to experience the awe and mystery known as the female mind. You are now entering the Fangirl Zone. Welcome to Sci-Fi Talk on the Fangirl Zone, a podcast where we discuss shows on the Sci-Fi channel. I'm Steve. And I'm Sean Fangirl S. And tonight we'll be discussing episode 6 of season 4 of Killjoys. Holy cow. Yeah, it was... So- <laughs> oh, it was crazy because they didn't know where they were going to go with the whole baby thing and totally different. Yeah. And it's funny because you may have noticed when we were tweeting, Steve and I had actually seen a picture from this episode. <laughs> yes, we had. <laughs> and we were trying to figure out who the heck it was. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Thankfully, it wasn't any of our people. No. It was just kind of funny. And I'm like, Oh my God, who is this a picture of? What's going on? And right. I think we had a good, what, 10 minute conversation oh, yeah. <laughs> just about the picture? Yes, we did. Yeah. See, and this is why we can't post some because if you guys heard us going crazy, I can only imagine all the conversations that would have happened based on that one picture. So right. thank you, NBC Universal, for screwing with our heads. <laughs> yeah. But, Let's jump into ratings news, shall we? All right. Episode six brought in a 0.08 in adults 18 to 49 with 0.398 million viewers, making it the 98th overall cable show for the day. Mm. Uh, it's a little drop there from what Winona brought in, that's for sure. So, Right. It's creeping back into the higher mm, numbers, which yes, is weird. Is. Yeah. I know, because when we're online, obviously, it seems like there's tons of people watching. Right. I don't know. Friday nights are kind of rough, I guess. Yes, they are. They are, especially this time of year. Yeah. All righty. Let's talk episode six, Baby Face Killer. Dutch trains Jack to fight an unstoppable enemy as Pre and Fancy look for the missing Garrett, or as he was calling him, Gare Bear. Yeah. <laughs> Which, one more thing, as we are actually discussing this episode a little later than usual, Dragon Con has happened, and our friend Natty over at the Nerd Element found somebody who was cosplaying Pre. Yeah. It was great, because you don't see that that often. No. It was an amazing costume. It was great. So hopefully we can get her to share that picture with us, too, because it was so cool to see that. And I love when we see all of our our various people basically up being cosplayed as and that shows that there's so many people who are really into the show. Right. Absolutely. But, all right. Let's start with Team Awesome Force. All right. Dutch. Well, Dutch and Johnny are able to bring up Dutch's memories visually. Uh-huh. So that uh. Johnny <laughs> can help her go through memories and figure out the differences in the story that Klein put in her head. Yeah, visual memories. I wouldn't trust that. <laughs> I know this feels very minority report. Yes. Because they're using Mano's technology to try to help them find out who the woman that Dutch had originally thought was the assassin is. However, this ends up setting off an alert and only makes more trouble for them and gives them no name to put to the picture. Well, of course we thought Klein was just going to give them everything without any problems. (laughs) They ought to know Klein better than that by now. Come on. (laughs) Nothing is easy with Klein. Yeah. And this is when we're finding out for sure, because we see it in Dutch's memories, that the rack symbol is changed. Right. So I I was right way back when. I'm like, wait, did it change? And we weren't 100% sure. Right. And then I think you said when you went back and watched that, yeah, it did change, yeah, but we had no idea what it was. So right. It's a clue. Yes, it is. And the third clue is the sound of a pulsar. Hmm. Or, as Dutch put it, whales mating or something. (laughs) That's weird. I never knew that they had a sound. But its I think it's really a thing, too. Yeah, it really is. That's so awesome. They emit a a sound. 
That's awesome. And I wonder if that was really a Pulsar they used then. That would be even cooler. Yeah. I've, they do I pretty authentic was. stuff. Yeah, I bet it was. Now, of course, we also get our first glimpse into the green space since Dutch came back. And Anila is still fighting the lady in Klein's form. And we see that it's she's injured. And it's the same way that Dutch is also injured in the real world. Wait a second. What's happening? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know they're connected, but... I didn't think they were that connected. Exactly. It's... So does this mean Anila is breaking down mentally, physically, or that perhaps the walls from the green are breaking down and it's not going to be all frozen over soon? Right. And that's probably a pretty good possibility. Because of the dolls taking off with the on the ships from the uh, armada. Interesting. And then, does this mean that if Anila dies in the green, Dutch dies out here? Yeah, that's what's got me very concerned. Questions, questions. 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 Well, we answered a few as Del Say is back is back to being the Qureshi royal that we're used to from season one. <laughs> Well, at least she's got a pretty good front happening, if nothing else. Right. Holding those hormones in check. Yeah. And she gives the boy a name, Osmond Kenrit, which is supposed to be after her grandfather. And do we assume that it's Anila's surname, maybe? Ah, uh, maybe. Maybe she revealed a little more about herself than we've all known. Right. So, I don't know. We know that Anila's mom's name is Yel... Yelena Yardine, so I don't know. I mean, I just assumed Klein, that was his last name. Yeah, but that could be Klein's last name. Who knows? Right. Oh, that's really weird. But, I mean, they made kind of a big deal, right, about Yardine being the name being restored in right. Dutch. So, yeah. so who yeah. knows? Who knows where that <laughs> the rest of his name comes from. Unless their society is more matriarchal. Right. Which it could be. Hmm. More questions. Yes. Because we really don't know that much about the nine. We don't. So, yeah, it could very well be a matriarchal system. But Delsea informs the crew that she is leaving to go back to Koresh. Hmm. And she's totally cool leaving the kid, though. It's like, okay. Yeah, what? <laughs> As she's trying to teach him proper manners. Okay. That was a lot of silverware to try to teach somebody who's two days old. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> a lot of to teach me. I mean, let's be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure anybody could pick that up that fast. Right. Start from the outside, work your way in. That's all I know. Right. Hope for the best. <laughs> and of course, we get a very awkward moment with, Osman as she's trying to say goodbye and Davin is standing there basically being awkward as well and making faces at Delsea's motherliness. <laughs> well, it's funny because she was kind of ripping on him too when she's trying to teach him how to eat properly. Right. As and, a royal. And Dav just comes in and grabs. <laughs> yeah. And then she's like, oh, you're definitely a Jacoby too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> which is funny. But I feel like Osman has seen enough at this point, even though it's only been a day, that he's like, okay, this seems normal. Because when Delcio is going to leave, he gets up to, like, hug her. Right. And she's like, whoa, physical contacts for the poor. <laughs> what? And she just, yeah, kind of taps him. It's like, what? What are you doing? Yeah. This is weird. You... Yeah, you're, you're kind petting of died him. Once. Yeah, you're petting him like it was a pet. Yeah, and obviously it's a lot different than what he's already seen just with our little group. Right. They shake hands and touch, touch shoulders. You know, it's like everything is kind of completing, I don't know, an action. And she's just like, yeah, we don't do any of that. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have a whole, whole segment here that was. Oh my gosh, now what? I might cry. Right, because we go to Zeph and Pip, and Zeph is still completely convinced that something's wrong with Pippin. Well, right. she's going to find out real fast. Yeah, after a conversation with Dutch and Davin, who are not sure that they can ever trust Pip again, 
Zeph decides it would be best for Pip if she steals him away on a black root ship, leaving Lucy and putting distance between them. And another time that Lucy does not pipe up when some member of the team has left the ship. Right. <laughs> you go, okay, what's going on here, Luce? You need to help out a little bit. Talk yeah. about it. And of course, she believes that if she can get back to the Armada, that she can help him. That is until she finds out that the green plasma-born spider is in his brain. Yeah, as she's doing this, like, scans, and finally she sees it, I think we all had, we knew it was there, but we all had the same reaction, like, oh, God. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> it looked huge. It's like, how did that get in there? Oh, man. This is really upsetting, because that looks like it's pretty deep in there. How the heck yeah. did it get that? far without killing him right <laughs> yeah that's a good question apparently it can make itself smaller as it needs to oh well, that's the only idea i got with it right it's the only possibility because if it stayed that big it had ripped his head open right <laughs> so of course zeph decides she has to go old school in order to get the spider out which almost kills pip so that doesn't work doesn't he say do i smell toast and she's yeah. like not not yet. No. <laughs> like, what? Wait. <laughs> but this is where, like I said, it's getting really sad because Zeph, of course, is trying to think logically. Right. And totally scientific. And Pip's like, I just want you to trust me again. Do what you have to do to get this out because I can't be around all of our people. Right. And she's like, well, I have to kill the spider in your head. And he's like, do whatever you need to do. I mean, he was going through some serious crap with like, the needle thing in his eye and it was crazy until Zeph finally realizes if she kills the spider because of how it's kind of plugged into its brain. Right. Then Pip's gonna die. Yeah. She can she was able to disable it from being able to control Pip, but she couldn't get it out. And then when she's like, it got a really short life and Pip's like, okay, well, how much time do I have? And she's like, I'm going to do everything I can. And when he just says, oh, that that short, huh? Yes. And I was like, oh, my God, no. I mean, I didn't like him last season because I thought he was just such a smart aleck. Yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, by the end of the season, I'm like, okay, no, he's just, it's a defense mechanism. He's part of the crew. And then this happens. It's like, no. Right. I'm not ready. <laughs> Yep, we like Zeph and Pip as a couple. We don't want them to <laughs> anything to happen to them. Exactly. Oh, man, that's kind of rough. Yeah. Okay, kind of really rough. Yeah, just slightly. Well, Davin feels the need to make sure his son has some self-defense training and enlists Dutch, saying, no one I trust more than Auntie Dutch. <laughs> well, we all know she can take care of herself. Yeah. And he also finds out that Del Say had named his son Osman Kitrin. Yeah. Dad's like, do you like that name? What do you want to be called? And I love it. He's like, I don't know. Oh, uh, think about it. Right. Not exactly something that a two-day-old is going to be like, oh, well, you know, I thought about it for a while. So interesting that he's like, you know, what do you want to be called? It reminds me of a couple other random movies like that. It's like, right. do you like that name? But especially that you go way out, Osmond. That doesn't sound like a normal first name at all. No. <laughs> well, of course, look at Klein. Right, that's true. And Davin. Yeah, we don't have too many just everyday normal names, I guess. No, Johnny, thank God. <laughs> right. <laughs> now we get to hear from the boy exactly everything everyone's been telling him about how badass Dutch is, which was super adorable. Oh, yes, and how he thinks apparently he needs to wear leather pants in order to be an assassin or be ready for an assassin. <laughs> okay. And it kind of gives you sort of a peek into what it had to be like for a young Dutch when Klein was originally training her, I think. Mm -hmm. So we kind of get to see what some of the stuff she might have gone through. Now, of That's course. Cool and sad all at the same time. Though. Yes, absolutely. And it gets brought up later on in the episode. Now we go back to Utopia where the person who intercepted or got notified of the search shows up and takes out Mano. 
and then uses him to draw the team to him with the promise of new information. Talk about an unusual puppet. That was just freaky. Why am I blanking on it? Oh, yeah. It was almost like a hand puppet. He had the dead body there, and he was... (gasps) Oh, (laughs) right. I'm, like, trying to, like, remember, and I just had, like, a total brain fart about that. Yeah, it was weird, because he used it like the video link. Right. That's right. That's right. Sorry, people. Sometimes I just have a brain fart. was able to move Mano's mouth while he actually used was able to disguise his voice as Mano, and you kind of go, wow, that's... Creepy. Yeah. Very. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to blame my cold meds for making me forget that. <laughs> yeah. Or just because it was super creepy and I was trying to block it out. <laughs> right. So, of Good course, window. the crew, Dutch Davin and Johnny, load up to go see Mano. And, of course, Davin finds him dead while... Dutch attempts to use the crowded and loud utopia in order to work on training the boy more. And she gets even more frustrated than he is with his lack of learning what she's trying to teach him. Again, she's throwing a lot at him really fast. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, he may look like a teenager, but I don't know if his mind has evolved as fast as his body has. Right. He's literally born three days ago. Right. Give it time. (laughs) <laughs> and then out of nowhere, he basically turns the Dutch, sees a laser on her, and pushes her out of the way. Right. Duh. Just all of a sudden. It's like, wow. Okay, so he's learning, but obviously we don't want this real world experience. Yeah. And of course, she wants to know how he knew that. And he, he says, I don't know. I just know things. Right. And this is the second time we've heard him say, I just know things. And it's like, okay, is this... got to be the green. Right. But is it an ability to see the future? Is it precognitive abilities? I don't know. It's got me curious, that's for sure. Of course, the hunter successfully separates Dutch from the Jacobis, even if it is with the boy in tow. And, of course, cuts her communication off, leaving her stuck with the teenager with a lot of questions that she doesn't feel like she has the time or right to answer. Well, that's because they stumble upon a certain room. Yeah. And, yeah. That was hilarious, though. Yeah. Because he's like, the door well, open, wait. She covers his eyes. Yeah. He's like, wait, is that how babies are made? Hold on. He's like, oh, that's a whole different conversation, my boy. <laughs> Oh, but it was great because all of a sudden Dutch is like, listen, I'm used to being lied to, so I'm going to tell you the truth. Yeah. And then gives a short, short explanation of Anila and Delsea and basically where he came from. But she doesn't really know either, so right. it's a little difficult for her to do this. That's, She's like, yeah. and we'll try to flesh out all the, the little bits later. Right. So, of course, Lucy finds the pulsar that they've been looking for. And of because course, she's brilliant. Yes. And, of course, that makes Johnny feel great for figuring out one of the pieces. But, and while this is happening, then all of a sudden the, the brothers have to come to the rescue. Yep. And, wow, I thought Dav was really going to blow the guy's head off. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But, of course, he turns his neck and Dutch sees the tattoo, which is the symbol that the rack sign turned into. And, of course, that stopped Davin, and uh, he was able to get away. I don't know if that was good or bad. Right. And so they're convinced that the hunter had to be been sent there by the lady, even though he's not Hulan, and they're convinced that the only thing they can do is to invoke the Assassin's Code of the White Blade. Assuming that he's going to take that. Right. And they do have the White Blade. The hunter refers to the woman they're looking for as a colleague of theirs. And refers to themselves as protectors. Hmm. This could be interesting and really bad. Yeah. And, of course, things do go south. And the Jacobis go to leave the ship and find out that the boy is gone. He ends up taking down the hunter with a trank before he can stab Dutch. So, thankfully, he was in the right place at the right time. And knew what to do. Yes. So, So, he's listening. He is listening and he is learning. Maybe not as fast as Dutch wants him to, but <laughs> so far Maybe he's faster saved... than Dav wants him to, though. Yeah, but he saved Dutch twice already. 
So it's necessary then. Yes. Now, of course, Dav is struggling to be a dad during the entire episode, which is uh, <laughs> understandable. Seeing that what we know about the Jacoby's childhood, it's clear to, as to why he's so stressed about doing the right thing. Because right. their dad was not the classic father material. Yeah, not the best. No. And he yells. Well, he doesn't exactly yell, but he kind of scolds Osmond about the incident, the white blade. But Dutch praises him because she would probably be dead. Right. And she knows that. But Dutch is on a whole different level of this than Dab is. Now, of course, they've got him in the cargo hole and Dutch pulls out her old blades and feels like she has to interrogate him and make him talk because otherwise she loses everyone she loves. And this was totally reminiscent of the memory. Yes, absolutely. And the boy walks in, and instead of telling him to leave, Dutch insists that he come and learn with her. Which was probably a a bit over the line. Right. And once again, it's probably a glimpse into what Dutch went through being taught by Klein. But fortunately, Davin walks in and stops it before it goes forward. Yeah, and then they have a discussion. Yeah. And Dav and Dutch are not on the same page at all. No, because Davin tells her that what he did to her when she was younger was wrong. And it's abuse. And Dutch is like, no, it's what I needed to do to survive. And she's like, no, it was abuse. Yeah. And then she tells him that she wants to train the boy to be a weapon against the lady feeling that that's what he was made for because of his gifts, and Davin is not having anything to do with that. No. So it was really, really interesting, because there's times when Dav actually defended what Klein did, but I feel that it was a whole process with Dutch, and I mean, she's jumping right into like really bad stuff. Right. And so I don't think... I guess as a parent, I can see that Dav was like, no, this is not happening this way. Right. So later, um, Davin and Osman are sitting together, and Osman tells him he's decided he's what name he wants to be called. And he tells him Jacoby's. But Davin says, oh, well, we'll just make it Jack for short. Which I thought was really sweet, and I thought he was going to cry, to be honest. Right. <laughs> I mean, Dulce already said he is acting like a Jacoby, so... Right. And so now maybe he has a sense of belonging. You would think, hopefully. But Davin decides it's time to move and pack up and leave Lucy with his son. Likely to get far away from there in the war. Wait a second. Yeah. I can see him wanting to protect his son and is afraid that he might get too involved with Dutch's training to be able to come back from it, but... I think it's a bad idea, separating I them, of so course. Too. Yeah, you're just separating them, and Dev, if the Holland finds you, you aren't going to be able to stop them. It's just you. Right. And how is Johnny going to react? Right. And Dutch, for that matter. So, can't wait to the next episode to find that out. Right. Of course, meanwhile, back in Old Town on Westerly, Pri is determined to get his husband back from the Hooland. Yep, you don't take Air Bear. No, and never send a Killjoy to do a warlord's job, he tells Fancy Lee in the Royale. <laughs> as they I both... thought they were going to get into it. Oh, yeah, yeah very close to it. Is they both have different ideas how to go about getting Garrett back, and it's clear that Pre is leading with his heart while Fancy is leading with his head. Well, sometimes you gotta use both together. Right. Because basically, Pre tracks down the guy who's marking the doors and decides it's time for some interrogation. Oh my gosh, that was so funny, too. Yes. <laughs> because I thought the poor guy was gonna pee his pants. Yes, absolutely. Was, <laughs> but ends up talking him into marking a certain door. Let's put it that way. Yeah. And so when the Hullen bust in to claim their children, Pre is inside. And so they take him away. Pre was hilarious in that moment. And he's oh, like, yeah. oh, are you looking for kids? It's... Yeah, no, they're not here. But I have an idea. As he's like fixing a teddy bear. Right. It's like, oh, look at this. He really can do everything. Yeah. 
And then we get a shot of Turn and Fancy watching Pre as they have wired him up on the Armada and finally find out that the Hulan have taken him to the rack. What? Yeah, what? Why didn't we check there? Yeah, you would think that that might have been the first place they'd have looked because that's where the Hulan invasion started was with inside the rack. So. Right. Oh, my gosh. This was crazy. Yes, it was. <sighs> okay. Well, Steve, did we have any feedback about this crazy episode? Oh, yes, we did. Our friend Fred from the Netherlands has once again provided us with feedback, so let's take a listen. Hello, Fangirl Zone podcasters. This is Fred from the Netherlands with some feedback for Kill Yours, Season 4, Episode 6. Today is the 26th of August. About Episode 6, I like the second scene with Delcea teaching Osman table manners very much. Especially when Osman is not doing it all right and Delcea is saying, Oh God, you eat like a Jacoby. Just a little later, Devon comes in and just snatches some goodies from the tray. Just to prove what Delcea just said. Really funny was when Jack asks for lunch in the middle of a fight. And what Dutch Dan says is a nice reference to what Delcea said about 60 minutes earlier in the episode. Delcea had said, as I said previously, Oh God, so you eat like a Jacoby. And now Dutch says, Oh God, you really are a Jacoby, aren't you? Also very funny was when Dutch and Jack walk into the busy sex worker and she covers his eyes. Also very nice scenes are how Dutch trains Jack and kicking ass uh, to Devon. Although this was nice until she went too far. Fortunately Devon stopped her in letting Jack witness how she kills the assassin. It's very touching how Seth cares for Pepin. Let's hope she can solve the spider problem. Perhaps they should hollonize Pepin. The spider does need the green, and we have already seen three dehollonized major characters, Fancy Lee, Johnny, and Elsea, and I think it would also be funny to see Pepin as a Hollen. It's a pity we lost Mano, because his skills were very handy at times. Okay, I have some questions. What is the meaning of that bleeding of the mouth simultaneously to Anila and Dutch? The strange thing is there is no reference to it back during the rest of the episode. No consequences, not no talking about it. So, strange. 2. What are Jack's powers? And will they remain like this or will they evolve? 3. Where is Delcea going, if not to crash? 4. What's happened to all the whole ships that left the Yamada? We didn't see anything about that in this episode. 5. What will happen to Pre? Will they take him to the same place as Garrett? 6. What the heck is Fancy Lee doing in the meanwhile? 7. Who was the other assassin, and who was he working for, and what does this so-called divine calling mean? The assassin says, it began hundreds of years before you were born, and it will continue centuries after your Dutch. Very ominous. So, what does this all mean? I have no idea. Greetings, all the best, Fred from the Netherlands. Yeah, Fred, the scenes with Delcea were classic Delcea. We got season one Delcea back, so I'm not sure if I like that Delcea or Hulan Delcea better. I know. I guess we'll see how this progresses and what happens. Right. And yeah, it was funny how Dav interrupted the uh, meal training exercise and by helping himself. Just like a Jacoby. Yep. <laughs> so let's jump to your questions. Yes. I think this is something, question number one, of course, that is going to play out for the rest of the season, and we're going to see how close they're going to be linked. Like I said earlier, I think it has something to do with if the walls are getting weaker. Right. And I think that's, I'm good with that theory. That's for sure. That's a, <laughs> I can't come up with anything better. Now, as far as Jack Powers go, yeah, I kind of mentioned that either he is able to see the future or at least have some precognitive abilities. And Maybe I, it's a spidey sense. Right. <laughs> and that's very possible. Now, how he knows it, he doesn't know. So, and I think with Dav taking him away, it's they aren't going to find out. Yeah. I'm hoping we'll find something out soon, but maybe it's going to be one of those just wait and see. Right. 
in regards to where Dulcea is going. I have no clue. Oh, it's, it's simple. She already where? said she wanted to go find Anila, so of course that's where she's going. But she doesn't know where Anila is. I know that, but she's going to try to find her. You think she's going back to Arkin, where it all started? Well, I don't know if she knows that Arkin is where everything started. Oh, okay. But we'll Good. see. But yeah, she's on her mission is to find Anila at all costs. Now, apparently, the Hulan ships that left the Armada, could they have been the ones who uh, showed up at the rack and started taking the children? I thought they some of them kind of disappeared before the they left, so maybe they're uh, went and are preparing for um, the lady to make her exit out of the green. Hmm. Another big head scratcher. Yeah. As far as Pre, I think Pre's going to kick a whole lot of butt and find Garrett. Yep, I think so. And why they would be that unintelligent to take him to where Garrett and the kids are, I don't know. But <laughs> And of course, Fancy Lee is just hanging around with Turn to see what they can find out from Super Spy Pre. I didn't even pay attention if we seen him in the room with Turin. Yeah, he was back with, back with Turin. Oh, okay. When they showed that. And who are the other assassins working for? I have no idea. I am starting to think maybe it's the lady, but I feel like they would know who Dutch was. Right. So maybe somebody else. Yeah. And the divine calling. I don't know. You know, crazy cultist. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> that's all I'm thinking. They're right. brainwashed into being bodyguards for whomever. Right. And who knows? This, they could be. A um, a special unit that the Nine have hired since this. Or, well, no, he said that that's been going on for hundreds of years, so that can't be right either. Well, the Nine's been around for... Right. Yes, the Nine have. So, yeah, you could be right there. Who knows? Yep. Well, once again, Fred, we appreciate your fantastic feedback and looking forward to hearing from you again. Thanks, Fred. Okay, well, you guys have heard our theories. You've heard Fred's theories. We want to know your theory. So shoot us an email at sci-fi talk, that's S-Y-F-Y, at fangirlzone.com, and let us know what you think. And also, while you're at it, if you can rate and review us on iTunes and every other platform you find us on, because good ratings and reviews help other fans of the show find us, tell your friends about us and about the show and get them to watch this crazy awesome show. And we do hope you're enjoying the podcast. And don't forget to check out our website, www.fangirlzone.com. We have shopping links. We have pictures that I'm still working on because I'm super slow. If you have ideas that can help me out, please send me an email. That would be super helpful. But we also have various information about cons around the country. As soon as you find it, and if you know any conventions coming to your area that you want us to talk about, shoot us a link on there and we'll put it up there too. And, of course, check out our contacts page because that's the easiest way to find everywhere we are because we're in so many places. And that way you can send us messages that way and tweet with us and just message us and all that fun stuff that we do so we can stay in touch in this giant global community before we become like an intergalactic community like the Killjoys. Yes. So for this episode of Sci-Fi Talk, I am Sean Fangirless. And I'm Steve. Kicking his ass, saving your ass, all the ass stuff. And until next time.